Hi, and welcome back to another Razorback screencast. It seems like we've been UV mapping for a while, but we still have some work to do, so we're going to be doing a little bit more of that today. I'm going to start by selecting the right base object here, the actual part that supports the rest of the robotic arm. And what I'm going to do is use these traffic lights here to turn it to green, and then I'm going to hide everything else so that we can isolate just that object. So now that we have a much clearer view of it, we can kind of see what it's comprised of. So we have an N gone under here, which we can probably get rid of if, you, if we wanted to. So we can start by taking care of that. I'm doing visible only in my knife options. So I should be able to just slice this up relatively quickly. There are some strange uh, occurrences of extra cuts and whatnot, but I'm going to ignore those for now. We can figure that stuff out at a later date. Although it is worth noting that when UV mapping stuff, you probably want your geometry finalized. And the reason for that is just that if you were to create or modify existing geometry, you're actually modifying the existing UV map as well. And depending on what you're working on, that could be detrimental. But I'm not really sure what to do with these uh, with these edges, so I'm just going to triangulate them, and we'll we'll see if that ever matters. So we have this object here, and it seems to me like the first logical step would be to get rid of this cylinder. As in, when I say get rid of it, I mean map it and set it aside. So if I go inside of our object. I can use my loop selection to select the polygons inside of that seam. And then I'll just use my uh, fill selection, holding shift, to select the rest of the stuff. So now we can map this using probably a cylindrical map. So I'm going to apply my test pattern, cylindrical. Let's go to the side view, see what we're dealing with. So I can rotate it so it lines up nicely along that edge. Want to get it as good as we can. Go from the top view, make sure it's centered. Just like that. And we can even come here at an arbitrary viewing angle and sort of line it up right on the center there. That'll serve us really well. So once we have that sorted out, we can also make sure that the map is square and that'll help us in the next stage. So that looks pretty square right there. And with those polygons selected, we just say assign UV coordinates. Everything else goes haywire, but that's expected. And we have this strip of polygons ready to go. We can just put it aside. You could probably select these polygons at the top here where it... Oh, I see. That's those polygons. Yeah, so we need to map those separately. So we should probably change our map to a flat mapping and then rotate it 90 degrees. Make sure our map is the correct way. Correct orientation, assign UV coordinates. Now we can see things are squished a little bit, but once we relax the UVs, it should be fine. And there we go. We can also uh, relax these UVs down here 
so that that spot unfolds just like that and then our cylinder is good to go now we could always stitch one part of this back to itself and the way that works it's pretty cool let's take a look at that let's say we wanted to connect these two islands right here so if we select those two polygons we can see that that means this polygon needs to touch that one so what I can do is select this rotate it around so it's like this go back to our view to confirm and then we can just go to UV point mode select those four points and we can use the UV terrace command to connect them and at that point we'd have to do some additional relaxation and we have a chance of having this cylindrical bit start to curl on itself and that might not be what we want so in a situation like this I would probably just um, sort of offer it up by hand so what I would do is select so that we can move that point right down there and there's actually snapping you can turn on so I can turn on point snapping so that I can snap one UV point to the other and then I can scale it down until the edge sort of meets right there and that gives me a good idea of how big it's supposed to be how large and then I can simply just select one of these points and snap it into place so right there it's continuous we can test that by just selecting one of these polygons and then selecting connected and that shell is now connected so if I go back to the view we can see right here it flows smoothly from the base onto the top or rather the sides onto the top and then there's a seam going around the edge right there but that's taken care of so the next step is going to be this base part so cylindrical mapping will probably work for that as well we can rotate it back to how it was and we can see that we probably want to isolate the cylindrical part right along the loop of edges where it uh, meets the main hunk of machinery so we should just be able to select that loop and if I constructed it well yeah it should select it all the way around for us which point I can use fill selection to fill in the rest of it so now I have the part that I want but we also included this part we just mapped I want to deselect that and let's see what's the easiest way to deselect that I'm actually going to go back to UVW mapping so we see our map and then I'm going to control deselect that stuff and then I can put this back to cylindrical mapping and when we go back to polygons mode we have only the polygons we want now I want the seam to be right here so let's go back to this mapping widget and make sure that our green arrow right there yeah it's already at the right spot and so what that's going to look like it's kind of you can kind of see it here if you squint but once I assign the UV coordinates it'll it'll be a lot more clear so assign UV coordinates and that's sort of the shape that I wanted now this is a good shape except it's going to need to be relaxed so I'm going to relax it just one bit at a time like that so that unfolded that edge that was previously sort of dead on and then we can select this bit here and just do some gentle relaxing we get to this point here and things start to become a bit extreme now the reason for that is because of the tension that's created right here if we go to the 3d view it's this spot right here so from experience I, I kind of understand what needs to happen here we need to we need to add some edge cuts 
essentially we need to cut this part off as I have it selected right there. But we can deselect one edge so that it pivots on it. I'll show you what I mean. So when I relax with the cut selected edges turned on, these polygons, this should stay connected right here, but it should split going down the other two sides. Let's see if it works out that way. Yep, and so that's much less distortion. Things are still connected sort of in the way that they should be. And we can go in a few different dimensions and see how much we want this to be relaxed. Uh, generally when you unwrap cylinders it it curls them so if I were to unwrap all these all these polygons right here it's gonna curl a little bit and that's good for reducing distortion but sometimes it introduces distortion like right here there's no distortion one two three four five six seven eight nine like it, it looks good to our eyes but mathematically there is distortion and tension in there because of these edges that fold over so when we tell cinema 40 to unwrap it we actually introduce a little bit of distortion see how it skews a little bit we really don't want that so I'm not going to unfold this object too much it's good to know when to not unfold and notice that the 567 down here is much smaller than the 567 up here. And that's because we're not allowing it to fully unwrap itself. We get some distortion, but I think the general sort of geometry needs to be maintained as well. So once we've got these two parts here unwrapped, we can sort of look at the rest of the object. Let's hide some of this geometry. So let's take the bits we've already unwrapped and just go up here to select and say hide selected. So now we're left with the remainder of the object. So it seems to me like we should do this sort of the, the, the straight edged way. If we were to select these polygons right here along this side and unwrap those we probably want to leave the ones on the base out of this. That could be one way to approach it. So let's try that. Let's just go to our projection, change it to flat, and then rotate it into place. I think things are backwards here, but I'm not going to let that concern me and we can just change it to assign UV coordinates. So those are assigned. We can just rotate it so it's more friendly looking and then move it away just for now. Now if we go back to our 3D view in the top view, we can do a similar selection to the other side, but it's tricky because it curves. So in this case, what I probably want to do is try to see if I can get some sort of a loop selection to help me do the initial selecting. Typically when you do a loop selection, it goes, it tries to find a path all the way around the object. So that's something we just have to watch out for. Uh, we can probably deselect some of the ones that it erroneously selected, but typically you need to go in there by hand, usually with the live selection tool and just deselect some of the stuff that you didn't want selected. There we go. You can manually select that polygon down there and then from our select menu we can say fill selection and now we have this side selected. Good. So let's go back to flat mapping and just quickly assign the UV coordinates. Now we can go over here and just put that part right where the other side is. And what that leaves us with is this sort of central bit that wraps around. Now we could do flat mapping for the bottom and then sort of a cylindrical map up and around. But here's a trick. I don't think we need to do specific mapping for this since we're going to unfold it. So we can just do flat mapping for the rest of the object and it should be fine. 
here's how I plan to do that. If I select all, and then go to the UV view and deselect the bits that I've already unfo um, already assigned, I'm left with this hodgepodge of other stuff. Now, what I can do is using flat mapping, I can rotate my widget so that it sort of goes straight from the bottom up. So what that's going to do is it's going to map that flat like we want it. It's also going to map flat from up here, which is something that we can work with. So with the rest of the polygons selected that aren't already mapped, we can just say assign UV coordinates. And what we're left with, if I were to select the part on the bottom here, just going to do a loop selection and then a fill selection without holding down shift to get the bottom. And I can move the bottom away. And then I have this bit. So if I were to select this bit, deselecting just a single polygon up here, and then relax it, it'll just unfold for me just like we did a cylindrical map. So that's nice. And for this bottom part, well, it should already be flat mapped as it is. So if we relax it, not much should happen. It sort of rotates because of other calculations happening. But in general, if we were to deselect one of the polygons and hit apply, it only distorts a little bit. And in reality, it shouldn't distort at all. This is just likely Cinema 4D trying to help us out. So if we look at all of our parts now, we see some of them need to be reversed. This one is fine. This other side is backwards. So let's flip that around. So that's the side with the part missing, it's backwards. So we can just go down to our UV commands and say mirror U. The bottom, what does the bottom look like? The bottom is reversed as well. So we can mirror it either U or V. I think U will be fine. There we go. And then this part here is also good. It looks correct from this side. This side looks backwards initially, but if I were to rotate in 3D, you'd see it's actually not backwards. It's just upside down. So that's good. So we've already relaxed the part that arches over the top. Now we can relax these two sides. So we can expect this side to relax, but not move a whole lot. And that's what we'll see. It just sort of straightened up and that's fine. You know, if we felt that it was flat mapped accurately, we didn't want it to move that much. We can just deselect a few of these faces. That way only the edges unfold. But I know that we mapped this at a right angle. So what I'm going to do is deselect a lot of this stuff that we know is dead on. Because we know it's dead on, I don't feel bad about deselecting it because I know that it's not distorted. It's just the parts connected to it that might be a bit distorted. So when I relax those, it just seems like the edges unfurl a little bit, but the main part that we mapped is just still just fine. This one, however, is tricky. If we look at this side in 3D, we can see this distortion and banding happening. And that's bad, we need to get rid of that. So I think the best way to do that is probably going to be to select sort of this region and relax it or, or sort of deselect this region and let the rest of it unfold. So the way I'll do that is by selecting here and then using my live selection tool deselecting these bits right here basically saying anything other than this bit can be relaxed and so we get that. It looks a little weird and distorted, but I think that's actually correct as the texture wraps down this part and then down onto the bottom. If we were worried about that and wanted to be even more accurate, I think what could work is, let's try this. We use a lasso selection to just select the bottom part. I think we need to manually deselect these. So if you go to a 3D view, you can kind of see what that looks like. And then we're going to tear it apart and relax it in two bits. So 
up, up here we can deselect these parts just so that the edge relaxes. Good. And then down here we can deselect these parts that we know are properly mapped just so the rest of it relaxes. What we've done is maintained how planar this is, how well mapped it is. And then you can just offer these bits up a little bit right there, just like that. And then select the UV points right where they meet. And use the UV terrace function to stitch them back together. Now once those are stitched, we can sort of look at just these polygons right here and we can relax those. Maybe a little bit too much. Like I said, the relax function is really good, but sometimes it actually carries out a bit too much distortion. So maybe we can cheat a little bit and drag the points away. So if I were to use the point mode, we can almost stretch the object out a little bit, forcing this area to stretch. So that means that when we relax it, it should pull in a little bit. There we go. And so we go back here and what we get is we get sort of a straight projection here, a straight projection here as well. But then right here it sort of gets distorted. But it looks like I might be wrong. The way we map the sides, it actually looks like it's skewed and distorted. So you know what? Let's just let Cinema 4D have a go at it and see what it does. Straightened it out quite a bit, so it looks like I was misleading us. Either way, C4D does a really good job at unfolding stuff when you tell it to. So that's what it just did. Stuff is very square. And let's allow the base to be unfolded as well. looks pretty good. So now what we can basically do is unhide all the polygons that we previously had hidden and now we have our fully mapped object. But we do have a lot of overlapping parts still. So let's fix that. As usual, we have a um, really long bit here that might be troublesome. It might take up too much of our map. So I'm okay with breaking it off right there. So we just break that into two separate shells. And let's just do an automatic realignment and see what it does. Okay. So. That's good. There's a lot of spacing. Looks like that's better use of the space. And sometimes if you shuffle things around, you may be able to find that you can arrange things so they make a little bit more sense to you. Like for instance, in this case, I think it's okay if we let this be a long part. I was worried about it being too dominant, but it doesn't look like it's going to be an issue. Yeah, so that, that looks like a pretty good fit there. Maybe we can manually move that over a bit. Maybe add a little bit more spacing. It looks fine. So now we have that part mapped with all the bits the same size. So one of the features that's pretty important here is the equalize island size. And what that does, let me see if I can explain what that does. 
So I've imported a uh, texture of some gravel. It's a repeating texture. I used it in my other UV mapping series. And if I were to apply this to the object we have right now, using UV mapping, we can see where the seams are pretty easily. There's one right there, which maybe isn't a great spot. Maybe we should move that seam. And then there's, uh, there's this impression that all of the stone bits are the same size. So if I were to make this tile five times on each axis, we can see that a lot better. For the most part, all, this, all the stones, all the pebbles, all the bits of gravel are the same size. And that's important because if we're painting scratches, we don't want one scratch to be huge and blurry over here and another scratch to be fine and detailed. We want to sort of maintain a uniformity across the entire surface of the object. So this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move this seam. I don't like it right here on the outside where it's very visible. Uh, perhaps we want to move it down here. So the seam is currently right there, but we'd like it to be on the other edge of these polygons. Let's see what we can do about that. So this is pretty easy in general. What we can do is we usually select the polygons where the seam is, and here we see that selecting them shows us that they're basically right here. So if we were to use our rectangular selection, grab them, and just move them over here, we've essentially moved where the seam is. This is no longer the edge of a seam, if, as, as long as we stitch these up. And this is now the new seam. So what I can do is just snap it to the edge, and once it's snapped, go to UV point mode, and select these points that aren't quite stitched yet, and then use the UV Terrace command to stitch them up. And once we've done that, we can just select all of these polygons right here. Oh, I left a bit behind. I'm not sure why the cap isn't connected, but that's okay. And then we just move that back in. So if we go back out here, we can see that what we've done is we've moved our seam from right here in the open to down here where it's a little bit more hidden. So that's a nice quick way to just move things around. So we can probably delete that texture now. And we now have another part of our robotic arm mapped. And we're getting down to the last bits. Now, considering the other arm, the left one, I'm actually going to delete it. The reason is that we had a really easy way of duplicating the geometry from the right over to the left in a previous screencast, and when we're done all the UV mapping, it's probably just going to be easier to duplicate it over again, because it's not a very involved process to do the duplication, if I remember correctly, and it's simpler than transferring all of the UV mapping information from one side to the other. So, I probably won't delete it from the file just yet, but I'm just giving you a heads up that we're probably going to do that. And so now we have a lot more of the arm UV mapped, and we know where we are, we're where we are likely to pick up from next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and until next time, see ya.